that is. Oh, hi again, gang. Pete Ravel here. I'm down at Vanity, and uh, we uh, got an email. I thought I'd uh, like to share it with you. And uh, it goes like this. Let me just read it. Hey, guys. Hmm. I see we will be celebrating the great Jerry Lid's birthday in a, in, a, in a few days. I didn't know that. Uh, how about letting everyone know about this great American? Well, I have to tell you the truth. I don't, I, I don't know too much about him, but <laughs> never fear. Uh, our research department, headed by none other than Larry Lip, as for three Ps, uh, he got right on it, and um, he sent me this just a little bit ago, and I, I haven't, I kind of skimmed it, but so I thought, let's go over it together, because it's called The Story of Lids. You asked for it, so here it is. Uh, as you all know, there are all sorts of lids. They come in all sizes and shapes. Of course, their primary purpose is to cover things. Well, we both know that, of course. Now, a bit of history to put this all in perspective for you. And, of course, to reach our goal, which is to make you just a bit smarter when you retire for the evening than what you were when you woke up this morning. Yes, that's honorable. Mm -hmm. But before tops or lids were invented, mm -hmm, the little housewife, in order to secure or ensure that there was no contamination of the meals that she made over the course of the day for the evening, well, what she would do, according to Larry, is she would melt wax about four inches thick and she would pour it over the meal. Now, this would preserve it, you see. Mm -hmm. Now, when the little lady served her creation in a day, she had to cut away the protective layer of wax. Invariably, the little lady could not remove all of the wax, and some got mixed in with her creation. And as we all know, you probably, well, I know this anyway, uh... What? Oh, sure. Wax mixed with food is the most common cause of <laughs> rickets. Yep, that's what it's all about, gang. Enter Mr. Jerry Lids. That's with uh, two Ds, by the way. After countless tries for a solution to the problem, the very brilliant Mr. Lid, two Ds, he stumbled upon what now would be considered a considered a rather simple solution. Yep, gang. He invented the container top. Oh, what a guy. Until today, get this. For anyone who uses a top on their food creations, you will find that no signs of rickets are in that household. Wow. Talk about advancing medicine, huh? This is quite a guy. Well, as I go on, to honor the great Mr. Jerry, uh, the name of the top would come to be known as Lid. That's with two Ds. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, in time, the second D was dropped from the name Lid, and uh, so as not to confuse it with Kid, uh, that naval pirate of long ago, and we now say things like, and you've probably said this yourself, uh, can I have a lid for my coffee? Or that now famous saying, hey, put a lid on it. Yeah. Now, get this one. There's this goofy guy in Berwyn. <laughs> he bought a lid and tried to smoke it. <laughs> but what the heck is up with this guy anyway? It's about high time he realizes that there's that's not the type of lid that uh, we're talking about. What a jamoke, huh? Yeah. Well, it's a strange world I live in anyway. I can tell you that. So, Jerry Boy, if you're out there, from all of us here at Vanity, we just want to take this opportunity to say, thank you, boy. What a guy. By the way, Jerry did write an autobiography, and we have it here at Vanity. If you order his autobiography from us, You'll save 20%, and we'll pay the shipping. Oh, what a deal that is. Uh, by the way, the uh, 
name of his autobiography is uh, If It Wasn't for the Lid, I'd Still Be a Swineherder. Wow, what a great autobiography it is. You know, Biff Biceps read it last night, and he told me it, it's just a, it's a wonderful read. Be sure to pick one up for yourself, huh? For those lonely nights. Now, having said that, uh, as you probably don't know, Biff Biceps does collect lids, tops, okay? And I, I asked him for a, a few, so maybe I could uh, show you what, uh, well, a word, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Let me do this. This is some of the lids that our boy has, and these go back, some of them, a long time. This lid right here, this is an original Elliot Ness lid. Now, Elliot, of course, wore this when he was pursuing uh, uh, Al Capone. And Al Capone did see that, not to be a, un, up, upstaged, he got this hat. And what he did was, same hat, but he sprinkled it with, with diamond chips because he was not going to be updone. Uh, by uh, Elliot Ness. They're original. They're the real things. They're from the collection. What else do we have here? Oh, this one's a this one's a great one. You see this here? This lid here has holes in it. And um, this is if you're a real airhead, this is for you because right through, huh? This hat was made especially for airheads. Hard to find them these days, but the Biffers got one, huh? And then uh, what else we have here? Oh, this goes back to the 60s. Uh, this is kind of, uh, uh, this is a hippie lid. Uh, what it is is, you notice it's got the holes in it? Well, the thing here is if you put this on, stand out in the sun for three days, take it off, you'll find that your hair will be two different colors. That's right. The sun will have bleached part of your head, and then you'll have your natural color where there are no holes. So this was one of the ways that the early hippies in the 60s, well, it's the way they kind of did their hair on the cheap. And it works, no doubt about it. This is a great one. And I, I especially like this because with this guy here, you got that handle on the front. I... I wouldn't, I would, even though it's hard, I don't suggest to you uh, use it. I don't think it would be a good idea uh, to use it if you're mining at all because I, I wouldn't trust it. But again, if you want to do something with uh, your hair, it's a great piece. And oh, the coup de gras gang. <laughs> this one is big. This lid here goes back all the way to the Ming Dynasty. Get this. Uh, now, that is a true collector's item. What a lid, huh? Um, I don't know where he got it at, but it's worth plenty, I'll tell you that. Great lid. All right, that's the thing about lids. Oh, you know what? I've got one more here. Where did it? Oh, right here, gang. This is called, uh, this is called an authentic, this is an authentic slotch hat. It's got his name right over here. See, Joey Slotchett. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wrote a song about this hat. And I thought maybe I'd do it for you. Okay. I got an old slouch hat. Got my roll on my shoulder. As free as the breeze and I'll do as I please I'm just bumming around got a million friends I don't care where I'm going I've nothing to lose not even the blues I'm just bumming around Whenever worries start bothering me I grab my coat, my old slouch hat 
hit the trail again, you see. I don't have a cent. I don't care where I'm going. I'm as free as the breeze, and I'll do as I please. I'm just bumming around, bumming around. I'm as free as the breeze, and with nothing to lose, not even the blues. I'm bumming around. There you have it, gang. That's the story of Lids. Let's all celebrate Jerry's birthday together coming up, huh? And uh, I'm Pete Ravel. We're here at Vanity. You keep those questions coming in. We got our research department. We're happy to do it for you. You have a great day, and we'll see you, see you soon. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait a second. <laughs> I forgot. How about this one? No, that ain't any good. How about this one? Nah, that's no good. How about this Oh, no. There it is. A cast of thousands. See ya.